Hello my lovely Cancerians, welcome to your May 2022 Love and General Tarot reading. Okay, this is for you if you are Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, or even if you're cross-watching for a Cancer, or even if you don't know what you are or why you're here, welcome, there'll be a message here for all of you. Okay, cards are ready. If this resonates, there will be an extended reading and that will be the first link in the description box as usual. In that reading, we do a love reading and we look at how they feel about you, what's going on with your person. And we also work on whatever's coming up with these cards from the YouTube reading. Okay, let's get on with no further ado. Ooh. Ooh. We've got a lot of astrology going on this month. I recommend you go and find your favorite astrologer and have a look, okay? We've got Mercury going retrograde around the 10th. I know. And we've got, what have we got? A full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio, about 17th or something like that, 16th. And then we've got a new moon in Gemini on the 30th. So we have got a lot of stuff going on. Oh my God, you've got such a nice reading. Okay. Do a little dance for your cards because they're really good. Okay, overall energy. Two of Cups, Venus in Cancer. I love this card, especially if I draw it for Cancerians because all of the minor arcana have astrological aspects and this one is Venus in Cancer. So it's the Two of Cups, it's a gentle card, it's a love card, it's the card of introduction and exchange. So two people bring an equal-ish sized cup, although I do notice hers is a bit bigger than his, Never mind. Um, and they exchange these cups and it's like exchanging vows. It's a kind of an exchange of equals. And we've got the angel overseeing it and it's blessed. It's a really gorgeous card of union. Okay, we love that. And then on the other side over here, we've got the two of pentacles. Jupiter and Capricorn, some kind of juggling, decision making, it feels like these two are connected because there's two twos and also twos are often about making decisions. It feels like you may be needing to make a decision about where you are with a certain situation, okay? Now the two of cups most often, of course, it represents relationships, love, and love, I can't even say the word love, so, <coughs> love. Relationships and love, okay? But it can also represent partnerships, very close friendships, and partnerships in work where it's something you really love to do, okay? So it could be that. For a lot of you though, this is about a close friendship or a relationship between two people that requires some adjustment. This is always a card of juggling and adjustment. If this was a card for work, it's the kind of thing you get when you want to change your hours, you know, or change your commute or change where you go or just nothing like major, but you want to tweak something so it works better. Okay. It looks like you want to tweak something so it works better, but perhaps in terms of your relationships. Shall we have a look at the cards on the table? Let's go to the second camera and biddly bop. Love that, love that slow fade. Okay, let's whack the cards up here. Put that one there, that one there. That's a pretty good view actually. Those of you that watch me regularly will know I don't always score when trying to look at the cards. Sometimes you end up looking at my floor or a pair of pants or some toilet rolls or whatever it is. Okay. That's great. Let's just switch this up as well so that I can see. Cool. Okay. First card that really catches my eye, apart from obviously the lovely two of cups, is this card here, Judgment. Mm. Judgment always has past, present and future. We've got two eclipses this month and in the middle of those two eclipses we've got Mercury going retrograde. 
This can't be ignored, okay? Even though Mercury Retrograde has now become something on a t-shirt, you know, it's become a bit of a cliche and someone's coming back from the past and all that stuff. Mercury Retrograde definitely takes you back. And when you've got the Judgment card, it's the same vibe. It's giving you the Mercury Retrograde vibe. Something is calling you back. Judgment calls you to look at your, I'm just gonna pull that curtain because the sun has suddenly, after it being cloudy all day, decided to come out and show its face, which normally is nice, but when you're doing a tarot reading and you wanna look at the cards, so you get a much clearer view. Okay, yeah. You get with judgment this call to return, to be called back for something. And when you get it in conjunction with Mercury Retrograde and the Two of Cups and the Two of Pentacles, there is a real kind of marriage here between the past and the present and the future. It's, you've got the star card, you often get the star card, you are often associated with Aquarius in terms of who you're relating to as well. I have no idea why that is, but for some of you, you're dealing with an Aquarius and it just comes up all the time, you know, it just is. There's something here about calling in, what's the word for it? It's not calling in a debt. It's to do with this here, the Three of Swords. Three of Swords is always like rusty old pain, you know, it's old wounds. Three swords are kind of stuck in this heart. You can't see your next move. You've got your eight of swords there. You've got the seven of swords down here, a feeling that there's been something that got away from you. For one or two of you, this may be an actual person or relationship that got away from you. But for others of you, it's like the ability to process something that got away from you. It's really hard to explain but there's a sense that you've got such a lot of good stuff coming in here you've got your two of cups you've got your nine of cups and your ten of cups I mean cripes it's amazing but you've also got this kind of background here of the three of swords the seven of swords and the eight of swords swords often associated with air signs so this could be associated with a Gemini a Libra an Aquarius or with communication, if you're in a job that involves a lot of communication, or communication with someone else, okay? You, you, want, you want communication with them, but you don't want communication with them at the same time. And somehow the universe feels that with this Three of Swords, that you've got a call to answer, that you've got a lesson, that you've got unfinished business, something unresolved. I'm gonna take a couple more cards on that and I'm gonna go for the Lightseer's Tarot. I thought I would have to go for a different deck for you as well, not just have one deck. Get the ace of wands well we're not going to say no to that i mean the ace of wands is a great card you have a lot of energy coming in and it's been coming in for a while and it's been missing for a while as well you could be dealing with a fire sign here some of you it feels like it feels like very good energy to me this could be somebody new coming in let's have a look huh Oh, it's only a matter of moments before he shows his face, isn't it, everybody? Although I love this. I like this reading for you. Oh, my God. Woof. Okay. Let's put that down there. I'm just going to look at these extra cards and I'm going to take them away and look at the ones underneath, okay? King of Swords. King of Swords will not stay away from your readings. We've noticed this in your mid-month readings, 
in nearly every single monthly reading for the last god knows how long king of swords shows up the thing that i'm finding here is normally you know me i can be quite scornful about the king of swords and give him a bit of a roasting I'm not feeling that today though. I'm feeling like this King of Swords is softer and more approachable than normal. Okay, we got the Tower. It's actually a really nice version of the Tower because it's kind of more natural. Let's see if I can get it to focus on it. There we go. So we've got like the woodland folk and it's more of a disturbance in the forest than it is the kind of tower just coming down randomly. I feel like there's a bit of a revelation from King of Swords here. I feel like there is an explanation, a coming forward, a talk, a speech. And with the Ace of Wands, I also feel something that's been going on for you for quite a while, which I'm very pleased to see and I saw coming like a few, two or three years ago, is that you've become more magnetic in life in general, not just in love, but also in your life, so that you are a source of attraction as Cancerians. I think a lot of Cancerians, when you had your eclipses in 2019 or 2018, 2019, it broke down a lot of walls for you and a lot of places where you had blocks in your confidence. And I feel like you rose up to meet that challenge through difficulties, through the Three of Swords and all the other difficulties that came up. Some of you had your tower moments then as well, where um, you had the rug pulled out from under you a bit, you know, and it feels like, it just feels like you've got the fire lit inside you that you never had before. Especially if you've got a fire sign, moon or rising or something like that, it feels like that. Or if you're on the cusp of nearer to Leo, you know, obviously, because then you've got the fire from there. Queen of Wands, I think, is you and it's not um, a sign that would normally be associated. If you look at this card, um, Queen of Wands, oh God, what am I doing? Sorry, wrong camera. Queen of Wands is normally a fire sign queen, but I feel like you've got that, that you're now that confident fire sign queen, okay? And we've got the Seven of Wands in reverse over here. Seven of Wands in reverse is a feeling of combat. You know, it's very, it's Mars in Leo. It's a feeling of having to fight for what you want or fight with someone else or have the same circular argument with somebody. That might have previously been this King of Swords, but I feel like a complete softness from him that there is now an opportunity for dialogue. And I feel that the eclipses bring that, especially, and make a note in your diaries if you don't have a moon diary. The, 7th, the 16th of May, maybe the 17th where you are or a bit earlier, Full moon, total lunar eclipse in Scorpio. I mean, for the love of God, that's a big one, okay? That is a big one. If you've got cobwebs that need blowing out here, they're gonna get blown out. Uh, that's your tower card. That's your tower message. Anything that you wanted to hear from this person or even wanting to hear at all, you hear, okay? Let's just tuck these down here. Okay, Nine of Cups, Jupiter in Pisces. Nine of Cups is the universe requesting that you let it know what you want, okay? That you tell the universe your heart's desire. And when you have the star, that's in terms of manifesting, in terms of vision boarding, of letting the universe know your dreams. Some of you want to set up your own business or your own company. You've got this Ace of Wands, you've got all this creativity down here. And that sun has now gone in as well. I'm just gonna draw that curtain back, see if I can do it without disturbing the camera. It's very high tech here at Gemstone Tarot, you know. Cool, still recording. Okay. Some of you have a feeling that you could turn a hobby into a business or that you want to just learn a skill or get involved in something. 
I feel like this could really be something. And for some of you, uh, this is weird, but like performing arts, and I know this has all been hit really hard in the last two years in terms of, you know, joining clubs and societies and all that stuff. Singing, dancing, acting, public speaking, really not very Cancerian things normally. I mean, I'm a Pisces, we hate public speaking. I know I do this here, but I'm talking in front of like a live audience, like, oh my God. It's very well aspected for you. You're gonna get the opportunity, or there's gonna be talk of the opportunity, even if you don't wanna take it, which I would fully understand. Okay, I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying there's gonna be some opportunity of that coming your way. We also have here with the Six of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles, someone paying it forward. I feel like this is an act of generosity. Now, a lot of Cancerians have been generous to others. It's something you do quite naturally, but you're not always on the receiving end. So this is nice. Sometimes it's a windfall of cash. Sometimes it's what I call my little bag of money card. It's just a rebate, um, a bonus, something you weren't expecting. That's nice, but I also think with this more magnetic quality that you're gonna be receiving a lot more in May, okay? Now, Mercury's retrograde, so obviously it's tricky in terms of things like signing contracts, you know, starting new jobs, all that, new relationships. So take advantage of that this month. I found personally, it really, really helps if I lean into the Mercury retrograde energy. It really helps if I you know, go over an old issue that needs to be resolved. If I go back to an old wound that needs healing, you know, emotionally, there's something about chiming with the energy of the universe that the universe really appreciates if you go backwards when it's time to go backwards and forwards when it's time to go forwards and don't really try grinding forwards when actually the universe is sending you backwards, okay? Ten of Cups, Oof. universe wants you to be happy, Cancerians. Woohoo! <laughs> I know, isn't that nice? Two of Cups, oh, we can't even see the Two of Cups now. Hang on, got to see our Two of Cups. Two of Cups says the universe is going to offer you that ability. For some of you, it may be the chance to link up with others and to do some nice um, hobby, pastime, or even business. For others of you, it's more relationship focused, okay? And the universe promises nine of cups, if you can let me know what you want, if you can visualize it, if you can manifest it, if you can use your vision board or whichever method you use, I will deliver it, okay? 10 of cups, the happily ever after, I will deliver it, okay? We just have this little seven of swords down there and I wanna take another card on that. I wanna know what that is. I know in April it came up for nearly every star sign that there would be sort of retribution or there would be a looking at where you've kind of come from or people that have held you back. Oh, that one again. Oh my God. For the Seven of Swords, we get judgment in reverse. Okay. Okay. I do get this actually. So, big card for you, judgment, big card. When you get judgment in the upright, it's telling you to go back with the Mercury retrograde energy, okay? When you then clarify the Seven of Swords, oh God, I wish I could stop doing that, I'm so sorry. Um, and you get judgment in the reverse. It's karmic, it's a sense of karma. It's a feeling that, let me biddly bop back so that I can show you the card properly, actually. Sometimes it's easier when the table becomes a bit messy. Judgment in reverse. Okay, that's more relaxing, isn't it? That's much better. By the way, I hope you've got a cup of tea and a biscuit or, you know, a nice comfortable spot on the sofa or wherever you are. I like people to be comfortable and enjoy the reading. Okay, judgment in reverse makes it quite karmic. Seven of Swords is karmic. What has happened in the past then? 
there's something that wants to be healed. There's someone who wants to talk in some way. For some of you, it could be an old friend, it could be a family member. For others of you, it's this King of Swords character who I, you know, even if it's not an air sign, it's, it's the same person, the same energy that keeps coming up time and time again. Somebody who finds it difficult to talk, particularly about emotional things. Somebody who can be a little bit distant, you know. This Seven of Pentacles for the Seven of Swords and then the Page of Pentacles is literally saying, this, I keep getting the word retribution, I never use that word. There's going to be some divine retribution. Now, you don't normally need it as a Cancerian because, I don't know, most water signs kind of don't really hold grudges that long because we're water signs. It's like water under the bridge eventually, isn't it? But I feel like the universe is giving you a message that however long it's been since that Seven of Swords behaviour, that you will get that retribution, that divine retribution, even if you don't want it. But it's a slow process, Page of Pentacles. And almost what I think is happening as well is that you are getting this sense of being magnetic and this sense of being more popular and more lucky and more powerful and more empowered, which is the feedback I'm getting from all Cancerians. I feel like this started quite a while ago. It's not a coincidence, you know, it's three years of slog it's lots of very hard lessons learned. Um, it's kind of keeping your eyes wide open when everyone else has got theirs wide shut. For some of you, this judgment, two of cups, king of swords, and again, down here, we've got the page of pentacles, so we've got that twice. There's a very slow healing with somebody, okay, which I'm really pleased about. Let us have, let us have, I want to have a couple of Romance Angel Oracle cards for you. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> Release your ex. Time has come to clear your energy. Now, I get kind of confusing messages a bit from your reading here about this particular subject. I've got the King of Swords here. For some of you, this is somebody who's sort of your ex, but not entirely your ex. You know, I'm getting that kind of a vibe. And then with the Two of Cups as well, I'm just feeling like, It's not as straightforward as just releasing your ex, is it? And I can't really explain that, but I think you know what I mean. Yeah, worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. Definitely. Divine timing, divine retribution, and, and that word karma, you know? I don't even normally talk about or use the word karma that much, but it is. There's a sense of karma. Oh, nice. You get the flirt card. Extend your light-hearted energy to others. That's really nice for you. And whether that's like with friends or just online or just in groups, it doesn't even have to be particularly with a significant other person. Love yourself first, okay? Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. I think you're already there with that one. I think that's why you're more magnetic at the moment. And this could be the one, and that's something to do with the King of Swords. I don't get my normally, yeah, engagement. I don't get my normally quite negative vibes that I'm getting off the King of Swords. And I'm surprised about that. Okay, I'm surprised. And I can tell that this is a little bit complicated, actually. Let's have an animal spirit card for you and your person. In the extended reading, I'm gonna do a lot about that King of Swords, but also about the Tower, the Two of Cups. 
what's kind of the weirdness behind this? I'm gonna look at it, how they feel, what they're doing, what they're up to, the other side of things, but also the course that this could run between the two of you, okay? In all of its weird and wonderfulness. Nope, it's not that one. Colette Baron Reed, Animal Spirit Oracle. Can't even say it properly now. Yeah. <laughs> For you, I get beaver spirit, lay a solid foundation. This is what you've been working on for ages. And also, I feel like you're in a position now, like this Queen of Wands type feeling, where you're more in a position of power in that you feel like you deserve better, you feel like you deserve more, and that any negotiation, whether it's at work or whether it's, you know, in relationships, is going to be more on that basis of your own self-worth rather than what you can do for someone else. And it's very attractive. And it also means that anyone that makes it past those barriers, those boundaries, is going to be worth their salt, you know, is going to actually tip up with something or have something to offer you. And the card that I get for your person, which is really nice actually, is Nightingale Spirit. I love this card. Love is all around. I feel like there's a lot of love coming your way here from a place that there's not normally a lot of love coming your way from. That was like the longest and most jumbled sentence in the universe. Okay, I think you know what I mean though. There's love coming your way from a place that there isn't normally love coming your way from. Gosh, okay. I'm gonna do a couple of angel therapy cards for you as well. Just see if we can get a bit of angel therapy advice. Ooh. It's funny, I didn't even know we had those. Tell you what they are in a minute. Well, it's that one, isn't it? Ear chakras. When I saw this, I thought, oh my god, is there like a line of chakras that goes up your ear? Apparently not. Notice messages that appear as sounds, music, and words from both external sources and within your own mind. These messages are real answers to your prayers. So this, for a lot of you could be, and Cancerians tend to love music, through music, through lyrics, but also through, yeah, sounds, music and words, things that you hear, random things, things in the street. You are a powerful light worker. It's safe for you to be powerful. Your, your spiritual power brings great blessings in loving service to the divine. And in a way, the divine wants to kind of pay it forward to you here, which I'm really pleased about. And then you get integrity, which is not something you normally have any trouble with. Align your actions so they match your values and your inner knowingness of what is right for you, okay? I think you've become loads better at that in the last couple of years. And let's have a Healing with the Angels Oracle card. Yes. Okay. We get the Bowling Ball of Balance. This is about, I think, looking forward and looking back. You've got Mercury retrograde, you've got all of this weird energy knocking around about the past and old wounds and someone wanting to talk and all of that stuff and moving forward while honouring your past. And there's a balance to be struck, okay? We also get retreat, which I think is a really nice card for any Cancerian. Most Cancerians love to retreat, especially into a homely environment, okay? And then we get Archangel Michael. If you are struggling with any of this and you don't know what to do with the Seven of Swords, with the Eight of Swords, 
chuck it up to Mike is my answer. Offer it up to Archangel Michael. Just say, you know, Archangel Michael, um, this is what's going on for me. I don't really understand it. It's completely weird. I don't know what to do. Sometimes you could either write this down or just kind of speak it in your head before you go to sleep. You know, give me a sign, particularly with the ear chakras. Give me an audible sign. Give me a sound. Give me a sound, okay? And then just leave it. I always find I get something when I do that, okay? Whew. Right, I'm going to go do the extended reading. The link is the first link in the description box. I really hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you on the other side. Namaste.